Echo came out. This this may be a new low for Marvel. Now we thought that, hey, hey, Marvel's already at the bottom. Can't possibly sink any lower. Well, you'd be right and wrong. This, this is definitely lower than the Marvels. Definitely lower than Secret Invasion. I mean, probably not, because Secret Invasion kills characters that people care about. Whereas this kind of only kills characters that people don't care about. That being said, people care about the Kingpin. And this kind of like murders the Kingpin, but he was already dead after Hawkeye. So who cares? What's that go about? It goes about a B-bit villain somehow getting an entire... TV series. It's like if this character Nobu from episode 9 of Daredevil season 1 got an entire series about him. No one cares about this dude. Like we we want to know his backstory but we want to know it inside of like a Daredevil contained show where we get like a 5-10 minute backstory segment about who Nobu is. Just like it was in this thing where we had Stick come up and say, oh, that's Nobu, he is from the hand, and the hand is evil. That's all you need to know. Whereas Echo, we kind of already got everything we need to know about old Echo from the Hawkeye TV series, which is why the very first episode of Echo spends the first 14 minutes, if once we get past the weird alien crap, Talking about her past, and a lot of it ends up being before oh, that. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> ends up being scenes from Hawkeye, such as this scene here, where we have old uncle, old dad here talking to his his daughter Echo about what happened in the car crash, and they leave home, and we skip ahead, and we have. This same martial arts scene from Hawkeye where we have this kid going like, oh, what the fuck is this kid doing here? And then he flips her, and then best friend comes around and goes, Hey there, Maya, let me rub those chubby cheeks. <laughs> this is this is in Echo, by the way. This is the first we're at 30 minutes and we're still in like recap territory of Hawkeye. And then we have <laughs> Hawkeye coming in murdering the shit out of stuff. And then we have her old dad who's been stabbed by Hawkeye and then she's all like I know it was Kingpin who killed my dad definitely not Hawkeye even though Hawkeye stabbed him because Hawkeye told me that it was Kingpin who did it we get a single like text here from her cousin who is this lady here and she's all like we're cousins and now she's like no we're sisters so they meant to have like some bond but you know and then, of course, because this guy has criminal undertones and works in the underworld, and this is just wife, and they're like, we need to go to the store to get some stuff. And so they hop in the car, and they get T-boned. And in this car, a shot of magic glass comes and stabs old Echo in the leg, and then she's all like, ah, oh, I'm perfectly fine. Everything's okay. You're perfectly all right too, aren't you, mum? And then we cut over to mum. Oh no, mum is dead? Question mark? Anyway, we gotta skip ahead again. And this is all here so we can have a really out of place scene where she shoots a motorbike at some cop cars. No, no, that's not the scene. It's so we can see Vincent D'Onofrio show that he's actually friends with Echo and be like, yo, Echo, come under my wing, because I was like your uncle this whole time. I know you're angry about your old man being dead. I'll help you get revenge. And so he, for some reason, doesn't learn ASL, by the way. This is this is like a major issue that he doesn't know ASL and has this interpreter here. And the reason why I bring this up is because in, I believe, this episode, we have Kingpin confronting Echo here. And because Kingpin can't do ASL, he has to force feed a contact lens into our eye so that we can see Vincent D'Onofrio's CGI ASL arms. Yes, I'm, I'm not kidding. They wasted CGI money on ASL arms for the only reason I can think of is Vincent D'Onofrio, the actor, not Kingpin, didn't want to learn sign language. Now I get it. Learning sign language is hard, but like, come on, you're, you're in a part 
I guess they couldn't really get rid of Vincent D'Onofrio, but like, surely you could have like begged him somehow, like taught him what he needs to know just for like these few scenes, shot them like really heavily edited. I don't know. Anyway, the reason why we have all these cut, these flashback scenes all the way over here is so that we can have this all important fight with everyone's favorite character, Daredevil. <laughs> He is only in this one scene at the very beginning of the show. At the end of the 40 minute cutscene recapping Hawkeye. We're still in the past, by the way. This is pre Hawkeye TV show. And we have Daredevil fighting her in what is probably one of the worst fight scenes ever. This hits the leg for no reason. For some reason, charges up a leg kick, and then there's a massive cut, and it's over! A second cut. <laughs> the reason why I'm talking about cuts is because this bad editing is just off. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> we need to zoom in on that. Oh, zooming time. <laughs> Pat Murdoch's face when he realizes this is the, the acting he's in now. Oh, poor guy. Poor guy. We skip back and we have this scene from the end of Hawkeye where... What is he wearing? Kingpin gets shot in the face by Echo at the very end of Hawkeye. She looks like an entirely different person from where we see her next. And then... Blam! Well, that's the end of that guy. And then we... Have nothing really happen for a bit. We see her on the run. This is when the TV show really should have started, which, by the way, is at 28 minutes and 28 seconds. The TV show finally begins in the first episode of Echo. That's 28 minutes they could have just cut right there from this series. There is so many, like, wasted time, wasted shots. And it's no surprise to me that while this show was originally meant to be a full 8, 10-episode series got cut into five episodes. They already cut out at least three episodes worth of content from this show. And in the first episode, we can literally cut out 20 minutes and 28 seconds. That's pretty much another entire episode cut out. And the rest of this episode is her driving to her grandma's house, which no one's living in for some reason. I guess it's meant to be her home that her grandma now owns. I don't know. And she walks inside, it's perfectly furnished, and <laughs> she finds some dental floss and a needle and stitches her wound. <laughs> then we get more alien shots because she's starting to echo back to her ancestors, which is <laughs> just stupid. And then <laughs> new character appears. It's Cousin Biscuits. Well, let, me, let me show Cousin Biscuits. There we go. Cousin Biscuits has shown up. Who's that Pokemon? It's Cousin Biscuits. And she's her first line to him is like, Don't tell anyone that I'm here. I need to lay low so no one finds me. And he's all like, yeah, sure. And then the very next scene, she's without a helmet, driving around town so that she can spy on her cousin who was from the very beginning this one here that's the spy on cousin who is a firefighter by the way her being a firefighter never gets brought up in the show she is just a firefighter and it is in two scenes that we see the fire rescue people they don't build on it. Maybe in the extended Snyder Cut we can find out about the fire station backstory, but nope. And then she goes straight away from going, I need to lay low, goes into her uncle's criminal organization roller rink, where she gets spotted by this guy, who is an underling to her uncle, who is this guy in the picture here. It's just... And then he, of course, betrays her straight away. She then gets properly patched up by a mortician. It was meant to be a little bit of a funny joke. I don't know. And then she goes up into a 5G tower and explains, look, you see these people 
See, they're looking into this criminal organization that they can see from the 5G tower. And they're all like, I'm going, to, I'm going to attack this 5G tower because we need a new management. We don't need a king, we need a queen. Another line from the show. A sign from the show. And that's the end of episode one. Uh, we also have old Vincent waking up with a giant bandage on his eye. Because, you know, getting shot in the eye. No big deal. It's like when you try to shoot yourself in the mouth and you somehow miss your brain and it comes out the back of your head because you were aiming at your throat, not your brain. It's like that, but with your eye. It just it misses all the important organs and then his eyes like comes back to normal by the end of the show. Anyway, that's episode one. Episode two, we just, we have more shenanigans. And she eventually ends up on a train where she she does this. <laughs> I don't know why. In the train, she puts a bomb, but she gets into the train by grinding a hole. And then she just slides the perfect hole cover out. Now, I don't know about you, but when I, when I cut a hole into something, I generally can't like slide it off gently. It, it sort of like falls down on you, especially when you're in a really fast moving train with lots of vibrations and stuff. There's a very large chance that that plate went into the floor and fell through. But no, she just pushes it away like the train isn't even moving. Maybe because she's on a sound stage instead of on an actual train. And then she glues it back with this, this magical spray. I don't know, maybe it's nanomachines. I don't know. And then she jumps off the track. Oh wait, not before. Her leg getting stuck. And then she has an echo realization that she could use her echo powers to push. I don't make this shit up, man. I wish I did, but I don't. And then she has to like jump off the incredibly fast moving train. My god, that CGI looks so bad. Into this guy's car before it hits the thing. <laughs> it's like, it's such a fake car. It's not there. <laughs> And we have a slow-mo. This is why I keep thinking, am I watching Rebel Moon? Like, he's so much slow-mo. And she literally hits her head. I don't know what else she could have hit her, herself with. Oh, it's her knee. Her knee hits the thing. She then completely misses the cab. But the guy stops. And then she just climbs up. Like, she's not in the cab. Where was she? Anyway, that's that's almost the end of episode two. We have this scene where she finds out that Maya's back because Biscuits wants to sell a PlayStation 4. A Sony PlayStation 4. That's how old this show was shot in, I'm assuming, because the PlayStation 5 was most certainly out for a long time now. Like three years, yet they're like, I'm selling a PlayStation 4. Like, couldn't they have, like, reshot this one scene to say PlayStation 5? I need to sell my beloved PlayStation 5 for $100 so that I can repair my grandma's truck that I ruined chasing a train? I don't know. Fucking biscuits, dude. Anyway, that's how Cousin Lady finds out that Maya's in town. And then, because Maya sent an explosive... These guys are like, well, shit, we better open up this here box to check the, the goods. And uh, the white bad guy <laughs> uh, leaves the building. And these guys open up the chest. And what's this? There was a trap. Oh, no. And somehow she has made an explosive that just destroys the whole building pretty much. Yet these two are perfectly fine from the explosion. I don't know what city that is. I'm going to guess New York. I don't know how close Alabama is to New York. Let's look up a map. All right, we're going to go over to Alabama. Here's our map. Here's Alabama. Here's New York. I don't know if we can get from Alabama to New York in a single evening. 
That seems pretty damn far away. I'd say maybe Atlanta would make more sense. But I don't know city skylines well enough. I'm pretty sure Atlanta doesn't have an ocean view or a port. So I'm guessing it's New York. I mean, the only other place it could possibly be would be like Wilmington, maybe the Delaware at Philadelphia, Fairfax, maybe. I don't know. Most certainly ain't New York. It's pretty far away to get to New York in a single evening, but hey, man, the trains be crazy. Anyway, that's the end of episode two. Episode three, they sort of, we got this thing about a lady who wants to. No, women are life givers, men are life takers. And then she's all like, but what's the point in giving life? If I can't protect it. <laughs> Which, of course, eventually leads to this shot. <laughs> Just awful. And the reason why we didn't have this cutscene is because, well, she's a good shot. And that means, through the echo powers, she's a good shot. And so she somehow gets captured by these free literal bumpkins who are so incredibly stupid. Like, literal zero IQ players, less than 50. And they capture her and then give her back her shoe, which has a knife in it. Even though her boot was like left on the skating rink here, when she fell from the cube through magic, see? Her boot fell off and then she fell down. So you'd think they'll just leave the boot here. They wouldn't, you know, take it with it to the next location. <laughs> Why they would have her tied to the room in the first place? I don't know. Maybe because they wanted to do something with this disco ball and the skating ring. Like maybe they're going to have her skating around, shooting people and other people shooting her in the skating ring. I don't know. Which eventually leads to the worst edited fight scene I've ever ever seen in a show oh yeah i forgot about this she makes like a device out of these scrap parts i don't know what the fuck this is at all and there's no like there's no echo location saying like oh she can make these devices because she echoed back to an ancestor who can make devices like guns and she uses it to shoot out a light which makes this fat lady come in and then the fat lady somehow gets beaten and then dumbasses refuse to send them back up I don't know and then Echo gets free and then she turns the lights off and then a fight scene breaks out and the lights come back on and then she German suplexes a man twice her size and then we have literally the worst edits ever. I'm going to play this hopefully non-edited and not get a copyright strike here, but these are real terrible. I have to show them off. One, two, a three. I don't understand what the point of that was. They were like, oh no, this, this, this shot is too consistent. We have to... We have to put these really oblique cuts in for some reason. Anyway, she gets recaptured and they're about to kill her and then they get a phone call and so all the bad guys walk away. Leading us to the ending where... Oh my god, it's Kingpin! Dun 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 dun! It's Kingpin! Look, it's everyone's favorite Kingpin. Do you remember Kingpin? I sure do. And episode four happens. And we get some more backstory, which doesn't matter. And he force feeds her a contact lens. 
<laughs> so that she can see the worst ASL CGI goo arms. Because the actor Vincent D'Onofrio was like, I don't want to learn how to cite ASL. <laughs> Just do some CGI gobbledygook so I don't have to learn ASL. <laughs> and then they have a discussion for literally the entire show, and then she has another discussion for literally the entire show, and then another discussion, and then another discussion, and then the episode just sort of ends with her not meeting up with Vincent here, who is getting weird nanomachine healed with the nanomachine eye patch. Yep, that's episode four. Bring us to episode five, where we have a whole bunch of nothings happening. For like literally half the episode until we get to here where her mum echoes back to her daughter and is like look I shall heal you because I have the power of ancestors and then she gives her this outfit and she's all like well I better wear this outfit and then she goes to another home fair and then she somehow finds Vincent D'Onofrio in this warehouse and he's all like I have your family and there they are the family the grandmother and sister cousin and then she's all like trust me and channels her ancestors which is apparently only these five ancestors which is alien ancestor Plays with sticks, ancestor, shoots guns, ancestor, and mum, ancestor, <laughs> and gives her cousin magical kung fu powers because they're related, I guess. <laughs> and then the cousin and the grandma beat up all the henchmen with guns because another her powers or something, I don't know. And then eventually she heal attacks. Vincent D'Onofrio and then he'll attack him some more in his eye because she doesn't want to kill her uncle and then Vincent D'Onofrio is flashbacking to an entirely different apartment building where he's staring at a wall and deciding not to kill his father this time because Echo is here to say, hey, you can release the hate. And then he's all like, what did you do? What did you do? And then literally, this is how they edit it, by the way. <laughs> Just what did you do when they cut? He's in the car. Like, how many minutes were cut right there? 10? 20? Was that a whole episode of them yelling, what did you do to each other? And then we skip and the Vincent D'Onofrio is on the plane in the, the cliffhanger and he sees on the TV. There we go. And he sees the New York race for mayor. And he goes, hmm, maybe I'll be the mayor of New York in the Daredevil TV show. And that's, that's that. So that's okay. An all around shit show that should be watched by no one, should never get a sequel, about a character who is a bit character that is basically Nobu from Daredevil and should have never, ever been greenlit. Whoever greenlit this, you should be fired. This character can be perfectly fine as a random character in a Daredevil show, in a Hawkeye show, but never give it their own fucking tv show that's just stupid anyway see it